So I think probably first things first, uh, kind of setting the groundwork here with blue white so close. Uh, we'll we'll get Greg's Greg's thoughts first, then we'll we'll defer to Mark, and maybe I'll throw in a couple of things that I'm keeping an eye out for too. But what are some things that you're interested in seeing during the blue white game? Obviously, we've had a bunch of turnover on the roster, a bunch of new guys uh, either going to be going into starting roles or competing for new starting positions. Um, anything in particular that that you're interested in in looking at, Greg? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a, a, a lot of bullet points I could hit here, but I think, you know, the, the one big obvious one would be Drew Aller. I mean, seeing, you know, him, him as QB one, you know, how he commands the offense and, um, just kind of his poise and the step he's taken, uh, but really uh, the whole offense, um, in, in general, like I'm, I'm a receiver guy. I'm interested to see how these younger receivers or transfer receivers are going to perform and um, how they go against some of the, the best DBs in the nation. Um, I'm not sure. Did, did they release, I assume it's one V uh, one-on-ones offense and defense, or did they, cause I know back a couple of years ago, whenever I was playing, there was kind of like a mix, uh, but I assume it's, it's more of a one V one. So I'm, I'm curious to see how those receivers are going to do against um our, our veteran secondary groups. Um, and then, you know, just game, continue right? to go down the list. What's that? I think it's a game type atmosphere. So I think it will be one versus one. I hope so. Yeah. 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 Me too. Um, but, you know, thinking about the running backs, um, you know, seeing, seeing how they make another step. I'm, I'm excited for them this season. And then um, obviously the offensive line, which has, has seemingly gotten, you know, improved, you know, throughout the years. And I think this is kind of the year where they can really, really um, etch their mark in, in becoming like one of the the more dominant fronts um, in the whole country. So really just looking at the offensive side, um, you know, d- defense, I'm, I'm, I, I know will be solid, but, uh, you know, with, with Aller and the receivers and, and some of these younger guys stepping up, I think on the offensive side, that'll be exciting to see that, that, that first kind of glimpse at, at where they're at. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think, I think those are some really good points. Um, Mark, anything uh, to add, maybe a little bit of follow-up on uh, some of the stuff Greg said, and then also uh, layering in maybe some, some different things that maybe you're looking, looking out for as well. Yeah, I agree with Greg. Uh, Drew Aller is definitely a guy that I'm going to be watching because this is the first time we're really seeing play. And based off what you said last week, it sounds like they're going to do a actual like scrimmage type game situation. So I would love to see ones versus ones. I would, I, I hope uh, Singleton and Katron play Austin. You don't think they're going to play, right? I think you're, I think you're going to see um, largely the, the tank Smith show. I, I just, yeah. I, I just don't see any utility as far as, as really maybe they get a couple of touches like on the first series or something and then you know call it a day and get into some shorts and, and enjoy um the day or as well as you can if it, if it does end up uh raining a little bit but yeah i, I just don't i just don't I, the risk versus reward ratio on what you mm-hmm. can see or get or figure out i it just doesn't make sense to me as to why they would they would play a bunch of reps I, see, I, I, I challenge you right? there though what's that what's that I said Cephas I, isn't I, playing, right? Because he's not here yet. No. Yeah. So Malik McLean, yeah. he'll be the yeah. guy that – Go ahead, Greg. Transfer-wise. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure they'll get a lot of – I don't know about a lot of, but I think they'll get a decent amount of, of touches and, and run. Um, just thinking about Franklin, how he kind of approaches the blue and white game, historically speaking, and, and thinking about – my time there, there, there weren't really any guys that were, I mean, you know, Saquon, you know, from what I can remember, he still got a solid amount of touches in blue and white games, Christian Hackenberg, you know, he was in there for a good amount of time. And, and, you know, these, these bigger time recruits and players, veterans, even um, they were getting, you know, two, three, four series. So, I'm curious to see how he'll manage the running backs. Yeah, I, I think weather has a an impact on it, but um, you know, I, I think we'll get a, 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 a at least a couple of series of of the running backs 
At least I'm hoping. Maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Another thing, too, um, to your point, Greg, I, I wouldn't be totally opposed to it as long. I mean, obviously, they're, they're going to have safeguards in place and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff, too. But um, I wouldn't mind seeing them get some reps with Al or catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, I, I think they can be a little bit more dynamic there this year. Um, and I think uh, Katron was actually pretty good last season of, of catching the ball securely. Yeah. Uh, Nick had a little bit of uh, cleaning up to do, but – uh, from from the tidbits that we've kind of learned through spring here, it seems like he's cleaned up that aspect of the game. And um, Singleton in particular, I mean, the dude just looks impressive. I think I think he was listed at six foot or six one, two twenty eight. I mean, yeah. he's definitely uh, beefed up quite a bit um, and hasn't lost a touch of speed. That just that sounds like all kinds of trouble if you can if you can break into into the second level. Yeah, and that was something that. I kind of expected, um, you know, you look at, uh, I mean, I know the, the strength program in terms of like the titles have changed, but I'm, I'm fairly positive that what they're actually doing, the programs and, you know, the lifts and the conditioning and, and sprints that they're doing, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that it's pretty parallel to what, um, you know, Galt was doing back in the day. Um, and you look at the, the numbers that, um, you know, each and every single year, guys would improve from, you know, coming in as, as high school players from freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior. Everybody would always make a big jump, especially going from that that sophomore to, or excuse me, freshman to sophomore leave, kind of having a full year under your belt. So um, kind of expected, man. And and to your point, like, it's, it's exciting. Like, hey, he, he got a lot bigger, stronger, and he didn't lose a touch of speed. And, you know, I, I'm sure that's the same for a lot of guys. Um, so, so de definitely exciting to, to, again, see those, those younger guys take that next step. Yeah, yeah no doubt think, about it. No doubt yeah, about I do it. think, uh, like Greg said, I think we will see some single ten and some Catron. I mean, you know, I, the way I see the spring game is they, they do scrimmages. I'm assuming I, I you know, Greg would know better, but they do scrimmages and like almost uh, game like situations mm -hmm. in practice. So that's pretty much what they're doing with the spring game. It's pretty much just a practice. Uh, there's just people watching. So, yeah. you know, to not play these guys during the spring game, just because it's a spring game, I don't think they wouldn't, I, I don't think they would really hold back too much on a lot of these guys because uh, it's essentially just another practice. So, you know, let's say God forbid, you know, someone got hurt in the spring game well they could get hurt in practice too so um yeah. i think we'll see everyone and you know like greg was saying i'm looking at drew aller and then uh, as i said last week um or i guess this week the line of scrimmage how does the o line look against the d line how does the d line look against the o line and if it's one versus ones you know how do our receivers play against uh this secondary because our secondary is pretty good so um, how do these receivers like Malik McLean, Keandre, guys like that, uh, Caden Saunders, hopefully see him. Uh, how do they play with Aller against this great defense? Because they kind of have an advantage that they're going up against Penn State defense because they have so many. Th that defense is just stacked. So, um, yeah, that, that's really what I'm looking for. Um, but mainly just Drew Aller. Um, how does he look? I'm really excited to see how he looks. Um, Greg, is there anybody on defense that you're looking for particularly? Um, I mean, Carter is another guy that he's just a, a physical specimen that, you know, I think, I mean, he's already getting a, a lot of hype about, you know, all American status and, and one of the top players in in the nation defensively, kind of like a, a, a Micah Parsons type, um, same thing with with Chop Robinson. I think it's exciting that that we got him for another year, and um, you know, able to take on more of a leadership role in the defense. So, yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with with you, Mark. Um, I I think it'll be exciting, kind of another reload year for um, that defensive front, or even if you want to like you know include the front seven. Um, I mean, that's where that's where Penn State seems to historically thrive, um, mm -hmm. and it finally. You know, finally seems like, um, you know, with with Terry Smith, we kind of figure it out 
uh, recruiting DBs and, and getting them developed and um, mm -hmm. playing kind of the right way on, on the Saturdays. So I'm 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 uh, I'm excited to see the defense as a whole, but I, I think the that 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 defensive front could be a problem for a lot of teams. You know, again, just guys take another step through the off season. Um, younger guys coming in having having a, a bigger role on Saturdays and on the team. Um, so I'm I'm looking for I'm looking forward to see those guys. Those those guys, like I said, are are going to cause problems on a lot of Saturdays. Yeah. So yeah. as we said at the beginning. We're joined by Greg Garrity today here on the Mark Lesko podcast. Uh, please like, share, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet. If, you, if this is your first time tuning in, we're just covering Penn State football and the spring game tomorrow. So, um, Greg, when you guys were doing the spring game when you were in school, when you were a player at Penn State, um, like, were you guys as a team, like, were you guys, like, excited to get into a game, to have a crowd? Like, were you guys, like, amped up about that? Or was it kind of just like, this is another practice type thing, we're just going to have people there? You know, what, what What was it like as a team going into a spring game? Yeah, I mean, for, first and foremost, you know, I think it's always exciting getting the opportunity to play in Beaver Stadium. Um, you know, I know throughout spring ball, we have our scrimmages there, and, and there's no um, – there's no fans there like on um, I don't know if they still do it. You usually throughout spring ball, it's usually like maybe Saturday or Sunday night where you'll do a scrimmage. You know, obviously no fans there. And that's even exciting. Like, Hey, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to the stadium. And and then when you, you know, incorporate fans with the blue and white game and um, it, it, it is a, a game day atmosphere. Like, Hey, we get bussed over. There's still a bunch of fans meeting us getting off the bus. Like we go into the locker room. We're, where uh, you, you know it, it 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 feels like a game, so so guys get get amped for it for sure. Um, and and for a lot of guys, you know, of course you you have your more established you know guys who, hey, we know you're going to be a starter, you know, whether it's offense, defense, or what have you. But for for most guys on the team, for you know, seventy five percent of the team, this is their opportunity to make that step, you know, fight for that uh, uh, spot in the depth chart of, of a one or a two or, or just start to climb it for your younger guy. So, um, you know, being able to, to have not another opportunity at that, plus to do it in front of fans, um, yeah. guys get jacked up for it for sure. Like they're, they're, they're putting the eye black on they're they're tying their cleats extra tight. They're putting the, the armbands on like it, it feels like a game. Um so even though it's just an exhibition, another practice, yeah. um, it, it it definitely feels, at least from what I can remember, it feels like, hey, like it's it's time to it's time to go. Good, yeah. Well, I'm glad that that's the way it's approached by the players. I mean, I I feel like if you know if we had spring games in high school, it'd probably be the same exact thing. Absolutely. Um, I know they have spring games in Texas high school football. Yeah. They don't really have them here, but um yeah i know they have them in texas but uh yeah just just thought i would just thought i would ask about that because um i know the fans are always excited um again i hope they go back to like the like actual game type play because um like you said greg uh, i would love to see them be one-on-one -on -one. uh that would be awesome 